Rock and roll. Rock and roll. I was thinking, we've got one of the oldest premises in the book, of uh, Las Vegas Bachelor Party. We've got the two guys who wrote two really bad movies, Four Christmases and, and The Ghost of Girlfriend. <laughs> We got Todd coming off a, a, a honest, bit of a flop man. for school for a scandal. So I'm guessing when it came, I don't know whether you guys had any reluctance because it's, it's not the most sort of original idea in the world, you know. But I don't know whether you felt these things don't add up for me or. Well, we didn't go by the that data. We 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 had a script that was awesome. Awesome. And, uh, and Todd is yeah. Like, I, mean, I mean, his legacy is huge. So. Unfortunately, this business. Sorry, yeah. let's just say. Unfortunately, in this business, you know, you're only as good as your last project. But Todd Phillips is probably the best comedic director around so it would just be very short-minded for someone to say because School for Scoundrels wasn't a hit he's not a talented director and well, obviously the proof is in this movie well the good thing I know Todd is very dedicated to his craft and, and he uh, wanted to show all those sort of strange stains you get in the, in the morning when you when you actually go out in Vegas the, the morning after a good night out and he wants to actually use real tasers as well this is his authenticity was uh, <laughs> important to him how close did he get to tasering you guys because that sounds like he really genuinely thought it would work well, it, uh, fortunately, uh, these th two guys, uh, Ed and Zach, were smart enough. I would have been tased because <laughs> I basically would do anything he says. But uh, Bradley agreed to it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I did. I actually agreed to being tased. He was probably excited about it too. A little bit. I was tased during the audition. <laughs> Which, uh, why I got that would explain role. everything. Yeah. <laughs> it had a great, great opening weekend. It was 16.5 million on Friday. Second only to Sex in the City for an all-rated comedy opening and, and a great weekend, 43.3 million. Would that sort of thing register? Would you feel great or would you think, well, you know, it's just that's always out of our hands. It's up to those clever marketing people and all that. Uh, I'd be lying if I said it's not. it wasn't great to take the weekend. Uh, we just, I just found out and, uh, and, and Todd actually said, what's the difference like if, if we had it, if we were number two? It's sort of this weird being, you know, susceptible to the numbers. But I definitely am excited that we were the number one movie. And does it feel like you, you move up the food chain with something like this? Because you've all had different levels of success and National Treasure and, you know, Zach, you've been in quite a few TV things and movies. And, but this idea that you're the guy's on the poster and it's a number one movie, does that, do you feel a difference or, or you just expect when you get home it'll be a little bit busier? Well, I, I love the fact that, it, 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 you know, this is a movie where everybody was like, you know, everybody had the same goal. They decided, Warner Brothers wanted to be, establish themselves as a comedic agency. <coughs> They, they hired, you know, everybody's pretty unknown. I mean, Ed is very well known for The Office, but basically it's, you know, guys that aren't comedic movie stars. So um, I feel really privileged to be a part of a new sort of movement in, in, in the sense of trying to make a com our comedy without movie stars. You realize too that if you had played menopausal women on a shopping trip and you made the movie very long and somewhat boring, you would have got more money in because Sex and the City did pick his. <laughs> Just so you know, next time for Hangover 2, Thank you. do the menopausal women thing and go shopping. Well, the, the next, uh, I think the next movie is actually the, the, the two merge. Yeah. And we all date those girls from Sex and the City, right? Mm -hmm. We just shop the whole At time. At least I'm pitching yeah. that. <laughs> well, there is that danger always, sequels are very, very rarely equal. So there is always <laughs> that sort of, I would imagine, that feeling of, you know, I really just hope we can, you know, have half as much fun or, you know, do as good a job because. There's often that case that sequels suck. Oh, yeah. Did you see Into the Blue too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to say no. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I thought I thought Police Academy picked up steam <laughs> over yeah. its run. The fourth steam one was great. Right. I mean, it was by, steam. by six, seven, or eight, it was like it, it really hit. It, it, yeah, it really hit. Finally, that was made yeah, really <laughs> <stride. laughs> steam from piss. And well, it's 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 wanted to, steam. it wanted to stay true to the books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Zach, I should ask, I was looking last night just back through um, your, your, uh, an interview with, with Bradley from five, six years ago, and your interview most recently on the excellent Between Two Ferns, and I had to hope to get two shamrocks, maybe I decided you oh, know, nice. would have been a nice touch. Should I switch these with Bradley? Have you, have you lived, in those intervening years, have you basically lived homeless? Because the, the look has changed from that guy who interviewed on, what was it called, Talk Back, Back Talk? It was VH1, Zach. Uh, yeah, 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 I had yeah, it, was it was just a talk show on... Uh, yeah, I remember, yeah. Well, uh, I remember the clips, I should say, but... No, but I... Uh, you've got yeah. that homeless look now. Um, no, I think I had a beard before that talk show, and then those stupid executives made me shave it for the show, I think. Yeah, no, 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 no yes. I think yeah, that's how yeah, it happened, yeah. 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 But I should say, especially for you, Zach, this, this, this kind of film just changes the, the landscape enormously. For somebody who is on the edges and, and somebody who's got this wonderful sort of following and a, and a very, very kind of a wonderful out there sense of humor, suddenly when you are mainstream, the expectation to be out there is, is almost kills anything you can do because people just expect this all the time. Is that, I don't know if you're slightly worried that it, this no sort pressure. of success... No pressure. Well, I just wonder if this sort of success can almost derail 
Well, uh, my, I mean, I've never really thought about uh, being uh, an underground comic, it just or being that type of thing. I just did what I thought was funny, hoping that more people could see it down the road and that it would work out. And with this movie, I think it's helped uh, get uh, more people to maybe be into my type of uh, humor, but. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really worry me. I just. You just go do your job, and you just. You're not really. I'm not really there to please the uh, the uh, you know goth chicks that go to my that knew me years ago. It, it, it it's whoever thinks it's funny. I, I would like to have a broad broad audience. I think that would be nice. Bring them into the world. <coughs> Rock and roll. Sorry. He killed, that was an emotional moment when he killed it. That was an emotional moment. We got to split up. I'm afraid. I, I got the yes signal. Very nice to talk to you, man. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. much. Yeah. It's a shame awesome. I didn't have much time. That would be nice for you to have a, I know. a day or something. Just Appreciate it. I know. I've, I've never been here before. I'm